All right, I am here with the man, the myth, the legend. What's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> um, we're here at the Aperture booth, and y'all have some incredible new uh, lights that I want to. I want you to show us, and show show everybody. Yeah. So uh, let's do it. You want to walk it? You want to talk about it? Introduce let's it here. Let's do or? it. I mean, we're standing under it right now. So this is the giant 20 by 20 Infinimat. When we started as a company, one of the biggest things was. Aperture, can you please make your version of this light or this light? Right? We came out with point source, the Swiss Army light, which was basically the Lightstorm light. You can now turn your point source light into a Fresnel, into a lantern, into a softbox. Um, after that, we released, after that, the Fresnel, the actual tubes, the actual Aperture light mats, the mini lights, and then the panels. Yeah. So what that means is that now all of the traditional light fixtures, there's an Aperture version of those fixtures, right? And with the Infinim mats, we've now made the mat light that we've all been waiting for. Now, one of the benefits of the mat light, benefits of that light are, uh, sometimes when you want a soft light, you don't want a soft box, you want the thinnest possible but softest light you can get, yes. right? So in those scenarios, right, you're backed up against a corner, you need a ceiling light, um, you want something that's thin and flexible, and the matte light has existed for a while, but our light off the bat, immediately, uh, full color tunability, IP65 weatherproof, so it's ready to stand any weatherproof or rugged tear, and it's full uh, actual 2x the brightness of any other fixture on the market as well too. So really excited about that. Likewise, we have the actual inflatable diffusion that's set on there, and a lot of people have questions about the inflatable yeah. diffusion. Oh yeah. Why is it inflatable? <laughs> so the reason it's inflatable is because traditional matte lights they basically have two problems. Number one, they're super slow to set up. You have to build a frame because again, otherwise it's kind of like a cloth, it's like a rag. Yeah. And the frame is heavy and it takes a lot of time. The second problem is that when you use a lot of matte lights out there, they immediately will start to sag in the middle of them. Especially when you get bigger, it's because they're fabric and because the frame that you're holding is just holding the outside. So of course it's gonna sag in the middle and when you set a four by four floppy and you see that dip right there, that's an issue. Yep. And the only way to solve it is more frames and more weight. Yeah. Uh, the inflatable diffusion means you don't need the frame anymore. You can actually hold the inflatable diffusion by itself. It holds stability, it doesn't dip, and it's actually the fastest possible build of any light map. And if you don't want to use the actual inflatable diffusion, you can also actually just use the regular matte light by itself. And again, still 2x the brightness of other pictures. I think that's what a lot of people are, I yeah. think what initially were wondering is, yeah. do I have to use the, no. the inflatable diffusion? And I was looking earlier, and it's got a, Kind of a similar look if, if, if you're used to the F22C, right? Yeah, yeah. F21 or F22X. Uh, it's got that same kind of cross like X bar in the back, right? Yeah. So even if you're not using the inflatable diffusion, if you wanted to put it behind a, you know, some kind of magic cloth or, or, or something like that, yeah. you can just run it like a, just a standard panel, right? 100%, absolutely. Yeah. And I think one of the, a lot of the times when we think about um, matte lights, we think about the distance between the diffusion and the matte light itself, right? And one of the issues is that when you do frames, if you think about like the big sizes, right? I'm thinking about like the 20 by 20. Yeah. You have to build a frame and then you have to space the distance of diffusion so it's not too close to it yeah. before you hang that second frame. So the cool thing about the diffusion is that we've auto spaced it for you. We measured out what is the minimum distance to make sure that the inflatable itself to the end distance actually matches up and it automatically sets that size for you. So you have both options by itself 2x the brightness of any other color tunable matte light on the market. Yeah. And then if you want to get bigger and you actually want to use the inflatable diffusion, it's basically something that you can just grab and go and hold. Yes. For example, if someone's doing a steady cam shot, gimbal shot, something like that, you can now actually just hold the actual inflatable by itself and it acts as a little bit of construction for you too. Now they're also pixel, right? Yes. Pixel controlled. That's right. So you can you can kind of make like you can kind of make like a virtual scene like in the background is right? Yes, 100%. So um, basically, this is something that we will be talking about with Sinus Link Pro. Um, I can't go too much into that yet. However, what I can say is that um, for people out there that want a pixel controllable matte light, right? These by themselves are fully pixel controllable, right? You can see actually up there the different resolution that we're getting. Um, what we're going to be doing for all the Aperture users out there, for all the Sideslink users out there, is that we're going to be bringing pixel mapping actually to Sideslink Pro in a way that's going to be a lot easier to use as well too. Awesome. So that's coming out. So like, because in I think in like the launch ad, yeah. you had either an eight by or four by behind the window, yes. and you kind of had you kind of put sky in it and, yep. and kind of transition, so you can kind of get more realistic lighting. The idea here is basically that. Um, the way the film industry has been working is that we basically light people with single block colors, right? Yeah. But when we light people with single block colors, we're trying to replicate something in nature. Nature is not a block square white light, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So if you actually want something like, for instance, a sunset or something like that, we know that a sunset's a little bit more orange on the bottom, and then the color temperature gets cooler at the top. Yeah. So you can actually set up a box light, and you can actually use an image 
to actually portray and light people with that image instead. So you can light people with an orange bottom and a blue top, and it all acts as one fixture. That's really cool. I mean, a lot of a lot of fabrics now you're coming out with that are that have multiple colors in the fabric. I mean, the checkerboard ones are a little older, but like you know, now you're getting some of their like blue and tan. Talking about the broken down diffusion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to, and then different, even like different patterns and stuff like that to, to really mimic the light that we're they're used to. So it's really cool to see this in a, in a light picture because you have. It's not just one fabric, you you have you have all the colors for you. Yeah, my thing too is it's an efficiency thing. Um, you know, if it's a bounce or something like that, yeah, having multicolored bounces, that makes sense. Yeah. But for diffusion, wouldn't you rather have the point source, the actual source of the light itself, yeah. start as the color that you want it yeah, to be? Exactly. And then you don't need to separate a diffusion, so you're not using white light going through kind of a multi-tiled, multi-textured thing to break up that light and give you more naturalistic lighting. You can actually just start with a source, you get the thinnest possible light source then, and you actually get that breakdown naturalistic color that you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, one of my first thoughts was like, putting it behind a window, yeah. creating kind of an outdoor environment with the light, and you can do it on a stage, and it, that's kind of cool. It's my dream on this too is that you should be able to just be able to record a window, a beautiful window, right? Say I'm in Zion or something like that, and I want to shoot a Zion sunset, right? You should be able to replay that That's so cool. on your light, right? Yeah. And likewise, if you are shooting in a sci-fi movie or something like that, right? For example, we were talking to uh, some of the team that did Star Wars, right? When the team does holograms, they think about the light from the hologram on someone's face. You want it to move, right? Yeah. It's not just one blue square, right? Yeah. So you could actually take images and start to light people with those images as well. Yeah, too. start so, catching interesting, like with a fire or whatever, catch yeah, light, and, uh, you know, and see that catch light. A, a, a fire is not just one light going like yeah, this. Exactly. It moves yeah, and major. shapes, right? Exactly. So, again, I think for a lot of people out there, they're going to care like, oh, this is complicated. The idea of like, you know, all of these different pixels. I would just think about it like you don't have to jump into high resolution lighting, right? Yeah. You can start with just maybe four squares and say instead of it being a white block. What if we had this just a little bit more blue, this a little bit more green, and then some white yeah. here? Because there's a sky, there's trees, and then there's white light. Well, I have full faith and confidence that Sidus Link is going to make this so easy for us anyways. It's made, I mean, it's, it's, it's helped so many people in getting into gapping, into cinematography, not be overwhelmed with like a DMX unit, and getting into CRMX and all that kind of stuff. It's just, That's we open up the app, and you have full control, you know, on either on a tablet or your phone, and so, I'm really excited because I know that's I know that's just going to be like so easy when when that's when that's implemented. That's why I was so excited about the Infinimats is because um, now we have we have point source, we have bulb, mini panel, large panel, we have linear right. Infinite bars can be expanded yeah. infinitely, and now Infinimats. Now you have the Infinimat. Like every traditional film light now can be entirely within an Aperture ecosystem inside a Sling. And now you can control all of it. It all wirelessly networks. It all automatically gives you control. And with Side Sling Pro, you now have instantaneous queuing, which means yes. that when your finger moves, everything moves automatically. That demo was amazing. And you get Wi-Fi level stability. Yes, and you can build it on the fly. It's, it's incredible. All right, so we're over here now, a little quieter, a little less hectic at the Infinibar, with Infinibars behind us. That's right, indeed. And drinks at the Infinibar. Y'all yeah. just y'all just took it to the next uh, level. We're trying to make it a little nicer for everybody, right? All right, so the last thing is the Sidus Sidus ecosystem, yes. right? So you got you got a new product for that. Yes, we do. Let's let's hear about it. Okay, so. Uh, Sidus Link Pro is basically the big update that we have, and it basically brings a couple things. Number one, uh, even non-aperture fixtures can now be controlled via Sidus Link. Yes. So I think one of the biggest complaints that we hear is basically, I'm on set and I have to keep switching between all these different apps. Um, Sidus Link Pro means that you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to switch apps. Everything, the most popular lighting software is now able to control any fixture. So the same UI UX controls any fixture. Um, that does that through wireless DMX and CRMX. The goal is how can we make this as accessible as possible, but then after we were able to make it accessible, it's how can we make it as powerful as possible so that the most expensive, the most complicated sets in the world, yeah. you have that same level of control. So we brought in Ben Dynas. If you guys don't know Ben Dynas, he was the CTO of Quasar. He joined our team, a uh, console programmer for 15 years, did like the Jungle Book Suicide Squad. Uh, he was their console programmer. His entire job has been, how do we make it so that Sidus Link users can do everything that the high-end consoles can do? Yeah, it's amazing. So now you have Wi-Fi level stability of all fixtures, aperture fixtures or non-aperture fixtures. You now have instantaneous queuing, which means that when you move your finger, you automatically get reactivity of your light right there in real time. And then finally, the last thing for me is, because it's not just CRMX or Bluetooth, 
It means that there's actually going to be more software features coming, which means that the Sidus Link ecosystem is going to be able to do things beyond what the consoles can actually do right now. So we're really excited about that. Now there's also a, a physical Sidus product, right? That's right. Yeah. So what is that? Sidus One. So basically, to be able to enable Sidus Link Pro, you just need one hardware fixture on set. For people that know CRMX, this is basically the ultimate transceiver. It's three products in one. It's a wireless router, an NTEC encoder, and it's also a CRMX transmitter. If you don't know what that means, that's fine. And you want to know what? You actually never really need to learn what that means because the whole point of Citus One and Citus Link Pro is that we are removing that step. For people out there that they love Citus Link, or maybe they want to start doing CRMX stuff, and they're a little bit worried, they're like, this looks complicated. I suddenly need to do IT networking and patching and all this stuff. We are going to be doing that step for you. We are making it easier. And then again, we're giving you all the benefits. That's the point of these two products. You bring Citus One on set. It acts as a router, gives you Wi-Fi level stability in your Citus Link network. And then you use Citus Link Pro. And now all of a sudden, the same UI UX that you've been using this entire time with all your aperture lights, now guess what? It has the same control and power and stability of a full-on Wi-Fi lighting console. That's great. Ted. Yeah. Thank you so Tyler, much. Pleasure. Really appreciate Always it. Always great seeing you. Thanks so much, man.